Welcome to First Baptist Church, both online and in sanctuary. It is always good to see you. God is good, and we will be celebrating Thanksgiving. We should be grateful every day of the week because he just gives you the breath. And if he doesn't give you breath, you will not wake up. So we're going to give him an extra special thank you today. So if you can, please stand for our first song, give thanks.
Thank you, Deacon Sharon and the choir for bringing us into the throne room of grace. In everything, give thanks, because this is the will of God. Amen. 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 Our call to worship. We look forward to our Thanksgiving service and invite non-perishable items for our community food bank, as you can see in front of us. Come prepared to praise and testify of the goodness of God. In all our challenges of life, God has been faithful in his promises in supplying and meeting all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. His faithfulness goes beyond the material and sustain us with the faith and hope we have in Christ. What are you thankful for? What if you wake up tomorrow and receive only the things you thank him for today? Would you receive anything? 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that through his poverty we might become rich. Are you rich today? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, the giver of all good things, hallowed be your name. Hallowed and holy is your name. Our mind cannot conceive your infinite riches, yet you laid it all down so that we can have riches of eternal life. Thank you, Lord. We have so much to thank you for. We thank you for your presence here today because where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are in the midst. You are present. We thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for life. Thank you for the breath in our body. Thank you for your divine protection and for your provision, Lord. We give you praise and thanks because you are worthy and you deserve it. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. It's because of your mercy we are not consumed. Your compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness to us, Father. We are not lacking. We thank you for this country that we are in where we have the privilege of coming together and worshiping you without fear. Thank you for being in our midst, Father. We pray as we praise and we worship you in the beauty of your holiness. You would accept our offering. You would accept it as a sweet-smelling savor. Father, it will bring glory and honor to your name, Father. We thank you for your word. Your word that's a light unto our path, a lamp unto our feet. I pray that as your word go forth today, Father, it would go out with power from on high, Father. You would give us unexpected things that we couldn't, our mind cannot fathom because your word says, no I have seen, no air have heard, neither had entered into the heart of men what you have prepared for us. Father, we just empty ourselves. We just empty ourselves and open up our heart and our mind and our spirit for whatever you have in store for us. Knowing that your word would not return void. It would accomplish what you intend. We, we leave everything into your hand. Take control, Father. Take control of the remainder of your service. And at the end, we would say it's been good that we come together in the house of the Lord, where we met you, where you touch our hearts, where you change our mind. We just give you praise, honor, and glory that suits your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Rosal. And she kind of gave an introduction to the next song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Hallelujah. His mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah.
Let's sing it again. Great is. Great is thy faith. Come on, great is. Great is thy faith. Every single morning. Morning. given to each and every one of you. And before I start my thank the response reading, I just want to say how grateful I am mm -hmm. that I have a church family. Yeah. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you because I've never had the opportunity to do it, but since I'm here, I'm going to take advantage. I want to say thank you for you all who remembered me and my family when we were going through. And you know, it's so wonderful to know that you have believers behind you upholding you in prayer because you can feel the strength of the prayers. So I'm so thankful to God that I know him as the Lord of my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful for the fact that he allowed me to wake up this morning Amen. and to be in his holy sanctuary. Thank you, Lord. So again, I say to each and every one of you, has given. And as we look around the world and we see what's going on, we can't take nothing absolutely nothing for granted. Yeah, amen. Covenant of thanks, based on Psalms 136. I'll read the white, and you will read the yellow. And it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his for his mercy mercy endures forever. Forever. Oh, Give thanks unto the God of gods, for his, his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endures forever. Did I skip something? Yeah. Sorry. Give me wisdom. To him mm -hmm. that by wisdom made the heavens, for, for his, his mercy endures forever. To him that stretched the earth above the waters, for, for his, his mercy endures forever. To him that made great lights, for, for his, his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endures forever. And the moon and stars to rule by night. For his mercy endures forever. To him that smote Egypt and their firstborn. For his, his mercy endures forever. And brought out Israel from among them. For his, his mercy endures forever. What a strong hand, with a strong hand, and with a stretched out arm. For his, his mercy endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea into parts, for his, his mercy endures forever, and made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his, his mercy endures forever. Overthrew Pharaoh and his hosts in the Red Sea, for his, his mercy endures forever. To him which led his people through, 
To him we smart great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. And they slew fam and slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Shion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for a heritage, for his mercy endureth forever. Even a heritage unto Israel, his servant, for his mercy endureth forever. Who remembered us in our low estate? For his, his mercy endures forever. And has redeemed us from our enemies. For his, his mercy endures forever. Who giveth food to all flesh. For his, his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven. For, for his, his mercy endures forever. Let us, let us remember. First Thessalonians 5, verse 18. Said and everything we are to give him thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Shall we? I think we should say that verse again. And everything, everything, thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Shalom, Maranatha, and amen. May God richest blessings be upon this, the reading of his holy word. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I see lots of orange on the stage. Where's my orange in the audience? Come on. I see a few of you. It's happy Thanksgiving and great to be in service today. Always in service on a Sunday, right? Uh, all through the week, we've gone through our struggles of life and challenges, and we just come into this place to do what? Release all those cares and burdens. So it's good to see you in God's house. Amen. And it's great to have so much wonderful visitors. We're going to acknowledge them very shortly. If you're here for the first time, can we acknowledge you? Just raise your hands real high, and we can say, Woohoo! <laughs> all right. We see some wonderful people. Great to have you, my sister and my brother in the back. And these two over here, they're no strangers to us, at least, because they were about to go to Rwanda this summer with us, but uh, fell ill and weren't able to make it. But uh, Alicia and Ron is the daughter and husband to uh, Lass and Charmaine, as you know now, they're regular members here. So great to have you coming from Connecticut and visiting us this long weekend. So great to have you. Happy Thanksgiving in Toronto. And we have our pianist here, his name is Dion Flash, and he's going to be playing for us today. Dion, it's great to meet you and, uh, and have you play with us today. Thank you so much, and we'll hear more about you later on, all right? And, and for the rest of you, all the rest of us, we say thank you so much. Thank you for your kindness last week to our son and uh, his daughter, my, my daughter. Uh, we got rid of the in-law stuff, it's just daughter now, right? And uh, he's, a, he's a married man playing on the drums. Is he wearing his ring, by the way? Did you check away me for me? Is he wearing his ring? <laughs> Just make sure, please, okay? All right. But, uh, but thank you for all your love and kindness to them as we pray for them to continue in this endeavor. And that's my nephew and his wife just stepping in there. It's great to see them as well. Wow, what an awesome day it is today. Amen? Uh, we are online. You can go to our website there, www.fbctoronto.ca, and you will see all our happenings there. But we want to say thank you for your faithfulness in the service of giving. And in, the, in, the, in front of you, the pews there, you will see an envelope. Hopefully you've got an envelope there. If you want to give a donation towards the ministry, uh, towards a benevolence or missions, by all means do so. I know cash is not king anymore, but if you've got a check and a big fat uh, visa card uh, we'll take all of the above all right uh, but thank you for your faithfulness because the ministry continues because you are faithful and God is faithful to you we say thank you Lord bless us we pray as we continue Lord to trust you in our giving and those who give so faithfully and those who are unable Lord would you find a way to bless them so they can able to respond to your command to give and it shall be given back pressed down and shaken together and running over that's my prayer that it'll be running over in your bosom as you stay faithful to God. Amen. Just some brief announcements for you. Our, our online service continues this coming Wednesday. We are studying the book of Proverbs, trying to get a bit more wiser. Who's more wiser now because of Proverbs? Oh, come on. I got to see more hands than that. Don't, I, 
I'm working hard here. I'm trying to get you all wise, okay, uh, to face this world of challenges. So God bless you. And this coming Wednesday, 7 p.m., all right, come and prepare to learn some more about the wisdom of Proverbs and what it has to say to us today. And then our children from 4 to 12 years of age, they also embark on, Sunday, on Wednesdays with their own Sunday school program on Wednesday nights. Uh, so join us and uh, register online if you need to for our children from 4 to 12 years of age. All right, and they have Sunday school today for Thanksgiving, so we'll dismiss them shortly for Sunday school later on today. And then uh, coming up is October the 29th is going to be our baptism service. We should be clapping for that one. Woohoo! I believe there is a clipboard in the back. There should have been, at least hopefully there is. But if there is, then we'll get your names. But uh, we want to start tracking all those who want to get baptized. We've got about seven candidates getting baptized this, uh, this October. Isn't that awesome? Uh, that's why we exist. Amen. You can have all the programs you want. But if people aren't being transformed for Jesus and that following in water baptism, I'm telling you, then we're not doing our job. So to God be the glory. And the day before, we're going to have a training, a little bit of a seminar training and preparations for that. So on the 28th, I'll buy you lunch. All of you who are getting baptized, come on out. We're going to, we're going to gather from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And I'm going to walk through a bit of training with you just in preparation for baptism on the 29th. So keep that in mind. And if you're new and want to be a part of the ministry, uh, even if you're online and here in Sanctuary as well, we're going to have a, a membership class following that on the, uh, the November the 4th. And please come prepared for that, 9.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. We'll have our time of membership class there as well. All right, Impact has, uh, has been, uh, it is now finished officially. And I want to say a special thanks to our wonderful volunteers and all those who worked so hard for the last couple of years. It was part of the government's black funding program, but we're going to continue in the new year just taking a break and a rest. Many of you now have tablets, yeah, and can uh, have emails address, yeah, and have some social media platforms, yeah, and send pictures to your grandchildren and your family across the world, yeah. Nobody's waving their hands at me, but I hope somebody learned something. Oh my goodness, I see some hands back there. Okay, okay, okay. I, I challenge you guys, I haven't gotten an email from you yet. Send your pastor an email, okay? Uh, send me an email so I can say, wow, you're on email too. So God bless you. Thank you so much. So all the volunteers for Impact 60, stand with me. I know you're in the back. There's Ibatol, there's Denise, there's Eula, there's Ovi. Uh, <laughs> Jalisa. Amen. Sorry? You're over there. I know you're, you're behind me. Thank you guys for your commitment and dedication on the, every other Saturday. Uh, we bless you and thank you for the work that you've done. And take a break through the season of Christmas coming up and everything else. And the new year will probably embark again. So thank you so much. But we are going to hopefully start a steel pan training session soon. So I don't know. I think it's like it's not, this is not 60 plus impact, eh? Well, it's going to be open for everyone, okay? But we may have to have you sign up because there was such a great interest. So we'll let you know. We're going to have a few sessions before Christmas, hopefully, and then we'll have some more in the new year, all right? So, and I'm going to be part of it because I want to learn steel pan too, all right? I want to know because I, you know, I, I came from a place that actually invented steel pan. You all know where that is, right? In Nova Scotia? Yeah. No. Anyways, we're looking forward to it, all right? So keep, in, keep the faith going, all right? And uh, November the 5th, uh, November the 3rd, sorry, that's the, the Friday before our training for baptism. We're going to go to um, Church on the Queensway, and they have the Brooklyn uh, Tabernacle Singers are coming with uh, Reverend Simbala, and I'm looking forward to that. So if you want to join me, join me, join me, join me. Meet me there at Queen's Park. We're gonna, I would suggest you get there early. Try to get, sorry? What did they say? Oh, Queen's Park. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Queensway, Queensway, down at the lakefront. Uh, meet me there by 7 p.m. because you might not get enough room. I'm trying to get some reserved seats for us, but there's no reserves. But I'm talking to the Pastor Billy and see if he can make some special arrangement for First Baptist, all right? So how many of you would like to go? Just give me a sense of the idea. Okay, oh, good, good, good. We've got a good group. Excellent, excellent. So get, I'm going to try and make sure we get at least three or four rows. Is that good? See if I can pull some favor, okay? I know the guy upstairs. <laughs> See if I can pull some flavor. We're looking forward to a great time together next Friday, okay? And then we have our anniversary service coming up, which is next the November the 12th. So that's only a month away. All right, we're celebrating 100 and... 
197 years. Wow, that's unbelievable. And we have a special guest coming. Our speaker is uh, Reverend Dr. Mansfield Edwards. He was the overseer for 14 years for the seven Adventist churches across Ontario, all of Ontario. Uh, he's a wonderful, he's now a family friend of, of ours as well because he happens to be our uncle on the, on the in-law side. And he's uh, Brandon's and Tiana's uncle. And I'm looking forward to having him come and share with us as well. So uh, looking forward to that. November the 12th, mark your date. Let's get this place full done and celebrate the goodness of God. Amen. For what he sustained us for so long as a ministry here at First Baptist Church. Somebody say amen. Amen. And we're going to go to our birthdays. Last week we missed one, someone very special. It was her birthday on that day. And uh, October the 4th was her birthday this last week. So Tiana, my daughter. She sat there in the service and didn't say a word when I said who has had a birthday. She's keeping it a secret, but now it's out. So we know what's her birthday this week. So happy birthday to you. And then Christine Allen is on the 8th. Uh, that's today. Both Christine, Lysander, Anouk is on the 8th. Happy birthday to both of them. I don't think they're here. And Kareem and Nathan is the twins, uh, grand uh, twins for uh, wonderful Angela Stevens. Uh, they're on the 9th tomorrow. Happy birthday to the twins, Kareem and Nathan. Carmen, am I saying it wrong? What did I say, Kareem? Carmen, my apologies. Carmen, yeah, it's Carmen and Nathan. And then Joshua Hartwall, that's uh, our leader, Ibital, his son. He's on the 10th. And did I miss any birthdays? I know you all, your birthdays are pretty important. Did I miss anybody's birthday? No? Huh? Oh, where's, where's Cousin Lona? Where, where, where? Ra Cousin Lona, raise your hand at me. Where, where? Where? Oh, when is your birthday? Today? Did somebody bake a cake? Did you bring a cake? Uh, Ibitol, go grab some donuts for us or something and put a candle on I don't know. It's your birthday today. Happy birthday, Sister Lona. God bless you. Anybody else for a birthday? We take birthday very serious because everyone in this church was born at some time. Isn't that true? Yeah, and that's right. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. One more time. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, and God bless you. Amen. We're going to continue on with prayer, and we're going to go to prayer. Actually, no, we're going to go to, I think we want to hear you. Dion, we want to hear you play first, all right, Dion? We want to hear you play first. So you go right ahead, and I'm going to do your bio later on, okay? This is Dion Flash on the piano. Give him a hand as he plays for us. You want to say something? like to thank you for having me here, uh, First Baptist. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be able to share in the Ministry of Music here. Uh, for you, I'm going to play this piece, Be Still and Know, and it's, it's a piece that I focus on when my back is against the wall and things are difficult. I just let go and let God and be still. Amen. Amen.
church, it is now our prayer time. I ask that you please stand with me as we proclaim the goodness of God.
the goodness of God, I will sing. I will sing of the goodness of God. Goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life. With my life laid down, I surrender now. With the words, I give you everything. Your goodness, your goodness is running after. It's running after me. my life and all my life now, I surrender now, I give you everything, your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me, just the voice is, and all my life you have been faithful, now listen to what you're singing now, tell him now, all my life, seats for a moment. Thank you ladies for our youth and young adults for sharing in our service today and how many of you have come with great needs and concerns and issues of life and challenges. Wow, all three of you. But let's go to the next song then. Forget the prayer. We don't need prayer then, do we? Do we need prayer? What are you thankful for then? You're here to give thanks today in the goodness of God. What are you thankful for? Has God, has God seen you through the struggles of life? Has God helped you in your physical ailment that you've gone through? Financial woes, but you can't even pay your bills this week. When I say to raise your hands, but I declare that if you stay faithful, God will pay your bills this week. Amen. You pay your bills. Kevin, so maybe I'll just, should I switch? Very good. All right. So last week I had a chance to go and pray at, at Queen's Park uh, because the, the COVID-19 is still upon us. We have a thing called long COVID now. Yeah. And they encourage us to be mindful of our immunity and make sure you, you protect yourself. And we got some members who are home today because of that reason. And because they want to make sure they protect us and themselves. And, and we are exposed to this whole idea that there is a pestilence still looming around us, an epidemic still looming around us. And I'm not sure whether you believe in the vaccine or not, but you've got to ask God to give you some kind of vaccine of this Holy Ghost. That he protect you from this coming season of winter that's upon us from our children to our seniors to all of us in our workplaces and being exposed and we prayed last week at Queens Park because this group the the livelihood group is called they are pursuing the idea globally that it's time for us to say we need a prayer vigil against the COVID-19 many have lost their lives I've heard we've lost loved ones parents and friends and family and children and we yet have not acknowledged that God is the one who's giving us the comfort in our losses. So last week I had a chance, they had a parade there last week around the Young Street, the police was involved, the government's involved, and they allowed them a permit to, to, to march from Christie Pitts all the way to Queens Park. For why? For to remembrance parade and candlelight vigil against the COVID-19. And I was there just to share a few words and encourage and pray. And I'm thankful that I can say to you that we continue to trust God in the midst of uncertainty. 
Amen. And I'll pray for that as well. But now we have another unrest happening. We got Israel going on, right? Isn't that true? You know, it's, it's, it's amazing because there's unrest in all the nations. Isn't that true? There's unrest in Ukraine, in Afghanistan. There's unrest in, in Niger, in Congo. There's unrest seemingly all over the world today. And sometimes even here in Canada as well. And in that midst of unrest, you know, the Bible in Psalms 112 makes it very clear. He didn't, say to, he didn't say just only pray for peace of all nations. He specifically says in Psalms 112, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Do we dare not take an opportunity and not pray for Jerusalem and Israel, what's happening right now? We've been there on our tour. We talked about going again, and I held off from going because I thought in discernment, there's too much unrest to take a chance going there right now. But may God have mercy. Look at this. The capital is Jerusalem, the place where Jesus would have been what? Serving in ministry. The major religions, here's the important part. The major religions is Judaism, is what? Islam, and is Christianity. You think about that for a moment, and to this very day, Ishmael and Isaac is still fighting. Two half-brothers still hate each other. And we pray against Hamas and all the radicalism that's going on over there for the peace of Jerusalem. May God bless our people that we are combined together by spiritual faith. Amen. And then the rest of the world, go to the next slide because I want to just impart on you. Matthew 24 and 2 Timothy 3 makes it very clear that in these last days, what last days? Well, I'm not sure if it was Paul was speaking and Timothy was speaking and Jesus was speaking about these last days. But all I know is we are in the last days of the last days. Because there's nobody else ahead of me right now. No, maybe I'll have grandkids and great-grandkids and they'll be the last generation. But right now we are the last of the last generation. So at least I know if we're alive still that Paul and Jesus and Timothy were speaking to this generation now, right now in this current culture. And boy, are we facing what? Are we facing wars and rumors of wars, nations against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, pestilence, earthquakes, famines, tsunamis, tornadoes, fire. Am I, am I speaking to anybody right now? What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for in a world of immorality and sin and evil? My message is going to give you a challenge to that as well very shortly. But 2 Timothy also talks about what? In the last, it shall be perilous times. Men shall be, women shall be what? Lovers of themselves, pleasers, right? Unholy, unrighteous, and all of the above. What are you thankful for? And you look at the bottom line there because the natural disasters, I was going to call it supernatural disasters, but I call it natural disasters. What are they? Earthquakes and disasters, tragedies, storms, drought, pestilence, fr did I miss any? Did I miss any? Tornadoes, maybe? Volcanoes, maybe? I call them natural disasters in this sense. Maybe I'm, I'm mixing it up, but I want to show you something interesting because at the bottom, I show you human disasters. Now, what's human disasters? Violence, illness, plagues, genocide, wars, famines. You might say, Pastor, a famine isn't a, a human disaster. Of course it is. If we have billionaires in this world, and there's poverty in this world, and there is famine, then it's our fault. It's human's fault, not God's, even though God promised he will supply our needs. I wanted to show you the comparison, and when you go home, reread Matthew 24, and reread 2 Timothy 3, and realize the context of where we are, and, then, and then, then you can say, in the midst of it all, in the midst of all these natural disasters and human disasters, of all these illnesses and wars and famines and genocides and all the sicknesses and all the tragedies and storms and pestilence and fire, in the midst of it all, now I want to ask you a question, are you thankful? Are you thankful? Who had food this morning for breakfast, or at least a cup of tea or coffee? Are you thankful? Who looked in their closets and had to pick out what color dress you want to wear? I was having a hard time deciding what I wanted to wear, orange, with an orange shirt or whatever, because God is good. Who had a chance to pick out a clothing this morning? Who had a chance to wake up and there was warmth in your home and the temperature is dropping outside? You had warmth in your house. How many of you want to say thank you, Lord? Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have something to thank God for? How many of you step out of your homes and recognize you can take the TTC, you can take a car, or you can call a friend and get a ride to come to church? How many of you want to say, I have a reason to thank God this morning? How many of you can thank God because no one is chasing you down because you couldn't pay your mortgage, you couldn't pay your car rental? All right. How many are saying, God, thank you because of your provisions for me every day? Do you have something to thank God for? Amen? And how many of you may be facing some kind of illness or waiting for some results from your doctor, some kind of report? How many of you can say, thank you, Lord? 
You all know my prostate. I keep saying it because my prostate is a testimony to all, all you men. Get your you-know-what checked. Don't come to the altar and ask me to pray for you, but you haven't gone to a doctor and use every means God has possible to protect you from prostate cancer and dying. God may use his hands, but he may allow faith to take his course because you deny the truth that God is the creator of everything. Amen? So do what you need necessary to make sure that you use every means necessary for God to heal you. And he might just use your doctor. He might just use medication. He might just use technology. Come on, somebody. He might just use some health product to help you in the process. Ask God to give you wisdom. Amen? But today I want to remind you of something very important, okay? In everything, give him. So ask me a question. If you didn't have food this morning, do you still give him thanks? If you had no clothes this morning, do you still give him thanks? If you won't have a roof above your head, but you're on the street sleeping on the street, do you still give him thanks? In everything, give him thanks. Is your condition? Absolutely not. In everything, give him thanks. In the good times and in, the, in your illness, in your sickness, in your terminal issue, we, buried a, we were there for a funeral yesterday. And we were part of that service where suddenly, within two weeks, a mother of a pastor's wife passed away. That's how sudden it is. But in the midst of it all, we can say, thank you, Lord, because in everything, we give him thanks. Now stand with me and let's pray. Pray like we never prayed before in this Thanksgiving service where we can say, thank you, Lord, in the midst of evil and sin and tragedies and human disasters and wars and nations against nations and pestilence and earthquakes. God, we say thank you because you are the awesome God in the midst of sin and disobedience. Way back in the garden, Lord, we recognize it's not your fault. Why we fail sometimes because sin has entered this world. But Lord, in the midst of all this immorality and all this evil we are facing with every day and tragedies, oh God, you are sparing us and you are saving us and you are protecting us. And Lord, we have a hope in you that worst case scenario, if even we die, we die in you, Christ Jesus. And we have the hope of eternal life, a better place of promise where none of these issues will ever face us again in the hope we have of glory. I pray and I thank you, O oh God, on this Thanksgiving morning. Now we can say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Your goodness is running all over us, Lord. And thank you for your goodness to us today. Thank you, Lord, for the health in our bodies and the healing you've brought to so many. Thank you for those who've gone on in you, Father, even though it's sad and lost for families and friends, Lord. Yet, Lord, dying in you is the promise of eternal life. God, I just pray today for our sister Marion who asked for prayer at home right now, for sister Lorna, Lord, who just got out of the hospital, for the others who are home and maybe in sick bed this morning, we just pray for strength upon them, Father, across the world, family and friends. We just ask you, Almighty God, even in this sanctuary right now, and those online as they listen to my voice, that we truly will say thanks to you, Almighty God, for keeping us, sustaining us with your promise, your provision, with your peace, with your presence, with, your, with the hope we have in all that we do. And I just pray in the world at large, Lord, that this COVID-19 that's looming over us and this flu season that's pending on us, Lord, the, the, the world of cancers that's killing us, the world of famines that's destroying us because of poverty, for those who are less fortunate, Lord, across the world, Oh God, have mercy, I pray today as we reach out to you in faith. Joining the kingdom of God across the world, Lord, praying for a better world, a better place. A place of peace and hope. Whether it's Judaism or Islam or Christianity, whatever it might be, Lord, we are your people. We are children of God. And you can intervene, oh God, I pray against all those leaders and those who are perpetrating hate and anger. The bottom line is the evil and hate that's perpetrating our world. So protect us, I pray today. I pray for God's protection upon you even now in the name of Jesus. I pray for protection over Israel and all the nations who are in disarray right now, Father. And I pray for humanity to recognize in the end, oh God, it's all about you, God, the creator, the sovereign God who rules the universe, who made creation. God, have mercy. I pray, intervene. I pray against all these leaders in the name of Jesus. Hold them hostage against the hate that is rendering upon humanity lord over 300 already dead lord in israel and hamas thousands already dead in ukraine and 
many others dying across the world. Have mercy, we pray, God. May we not take life for granted, Lord. We sit in our comfortable homes and we look at the news and the media and we don't recognize as humans who were, Lord, being bombed and killed and, and murdered, oh God. Have mercy, oh God, today. Lest we fall prey, oh God, to this evil right here in our city of Toronto and right across this world. Have mercy, Lord. I pray, Father, for the peace of Jerusalem. You ask us specifically, oh God, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem because we know, Jesus, that you are coming back. We echo the sentiments you ask us to, Lord, for the peace of Jerusalem and the people of Jerusalem, wherever they may be, not just in Jerusalem, but everywhere, I pray for the peace, Lord, to reign. Stop the bombing, O oh God. Bring a sense of humanity to these perpetrators, O oh God. Let there be not retaliation for life for life and bomb for bomb and war for war. Let these presidents and prime ministers, Lord, have a sense of articulate wisdom from you in how to manage the affairs of this global hate in this world. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray for our brothers and our sisters. We know there is much retaliation going to be taking place over the next little while. The effects it will have here in, in Canada, across the world. Lord, protect us even here, we pray. Protect the embassies across the world. And bring a sense of peace to all nations, Lord. Red or yellow, black or white. We are all precious in your sight, O oh God. Let the people, let the presidents see this, O oh God. Let them see that humans are precious, Lord, no matter our color, no matter our ethnicity, no matter our culture, no matter our religion. Allow us to live in a sense of harmony, one with the other, I pray. Even now, let First Baptist, Lord, be a model as we come together in different parts of the world, coming together in such a diverse way, Lord, from ethnic species of all around the world. We thank you for what we have as a family of God, a fellowship of God. Let us, O oh God, reach out to those across our city and nation and world to emphasize the value of Jesus in our lives and the care and love one for the other. I pray for our refugees who are coming in, Lord, the uncertainty with our government having to give support to that. Our churches who are trying to step up, Lord, let there be a sense of relief and understanding in the context of, of how we judge both left and right side. People need a place of comfort a place of refuge Canada provides that we say thank you for our great nation guard what we have that is so special where the world wants to come here and live Lord may we not become selfish not become exclusive but as your arms are open wide Lord as you sacrifice yourself for us may we open our arms to all those who will come whether it's from Europe or Ukraine, whether it's from Afghanistan or Africa, whether it's from India or China, even from the Caribbean, whether whatever, Lord, we just say, come and let us live in harmony for the sake of your kingdom. Bless us now, I pray, Father, in our own personal lives, our families' lives, on this Thanksgiving Sunday, as we say thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us, and thank you for allowing us to live in a, in a, in a nation, in a city, that has a sense of peace for us, Lord. May we always thank you for your blessing upon this nation. Bless our leaders, those in authority, as you've asked us to, Lord, and fill us with your wisdom according to Proverbs, Lord. For wisdom is the beginning of knowledge. We give you praise today, Lord. Bless First Baptist Church and the ministry that we serve. Thank you for this community and what we do every day, Lord. May we continue, Lord, to be the missionaries you've called us to be. And I pray you will go out and you will be a missionary to the world God has placed you in. Amen. Go touch lives this week. Put a smile on for Jesus. Where people can see the love of God into you. I declare a blessing upon you now. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Do me a favor. We're going we're gonna to do it Catholic style, all right? Not Roman Catholic, but Catholic style. Amen. I bless you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Now, some of you ain't doing it because you're all too Pentecostal or you're all too Evangelicals. 
but this is an act of faith. I say I bless you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. It's not sacrilegious. It's holy before the Lord. It's a reverence before God. It's demonstrating physically what we believe in our hearts. That is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who guides and protects us. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Choir, you ready? Y'all may have your seats. Let's have the choir come and sing for us, minister in song for us, please. All right. God bless you, choir. Yeah. 
Well, we want to count all blessings. Are you grateful? Yeah. Are you grateful? Kevin, would you grab a mic for me? For me? I need, I might need Deacon Ola or somebody else to help me. So you do one side, you do one side. I want you guys to just give me a quick understanding of why you're grateful or thankful. Not a long message. I don't want to hear about your granny and your auntie back and forth 40 years ago when she said this. Just give me in a brief sentence why you were grateful, why you were thankful. All right? And uh, Deacon Kevin and Deacon Ola is going to try to grab a mic and run around with you guys. And Kevin, there's one over this one over here. Grab onto Vincey for me. Let's count our blessings, amen. And then, I, and then I want to anoint my sister Diana is falling in love with this Jesus. So we're going to anoint her with oil and pray for her today. We are so thankful that we have, we want to say thank God for an accessibility chair that can allow a, a person in a wheelchair who is missing a leg to come to service. And this is her second Sunday. Second Sunday. And... Lorna, is being a, Lorna was in the hospital, as you know, who's also going to be your partner next to you in a wheelchair as well. I don't know if it's the same building, maybe, but, uh, but uh, you'll see her soon. She'll be back out soon. But for all of us as well, thank God, amen, that we can allow each one of us to come be embraced by God's presence today. So, Kevin, go ahead. So, so I got one person standing. Who wants to get, say thanks to God? What's the, what are you thankful for, Vincia? And I'm just so grateful for um, the way that he's kept me. And not even only that, but just that he is who he says he is, and he's just a faithful God to me. Awesome. Ah. Wow. That's a deep testament. I can imagine as a young lady like you, living in a world of this generation, that you are challenged to live for God holy. Amen. God bless you for that. Anybody else? Anybody else? Quickly, quickly. Let me not have to wait on you. Right back there quickly. Behind me. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you for healing me. Amen. And I am grateful. You're grateful. For Amen. Him. Yes. Diana, thank you so much. Amen. <laughs> praise God. I'm thankful Sister for Sister Gilda? His, yes, praise the Lord. I'm thankful for his kindness, his goodness, his mercy, and his grace and for endurance. And I'm also thankful for a changed heart. Amen. That's what I'm thankful for that I never had. But God gave me a changed heart to keep on, to keep on, to keep on. Amen. 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 We talked about that. We're so proud of you, Sister Gilda. God bless you. Who else? Come on. Who else is thankful? Well, visitor, right? Wonderful. I'm so thankful that I'm here today, that God brought me here to this church, that I feel carried in the struggles of life. Thank you so all for your warmth, and I thank God that I'm here. Amen. We feel the pain, but we also feel the release. Today is your day of release. Amen. God release you in the name of Jesus. Anyone else who wants to be thankful? A couple of hands right here, Kev. I'm thankful for my family, health, my friends, my Facebook, my first Baptist family, and we appreciate being here, and we love you all. Thank oh, you. Boy. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Right there. His daughter. You can stand since you, since you want to see her, sure. this pretty daughter that he has. There you go. I'm, I'm thankful for healing. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the ability to wake up every day and know that I'm here to make a difference. I'm loved by God and that I can continue to be what he wants me to be. Amen. Amen. Do I, dare, do, do I, dare, um, do I have uh, uh, permission to share... What God did for you. So she was going, they had already paid and booked to go to Rwanda with us. So it was supposed to be eight of us. Ended up being six of us because they live in Connecticut. They were going to come here and fly with us. But then uh, uh, Alicia uh, developed a, an umbilical hernia. And she had to end up having surgery. And we weren't sure about the surgery on that time. But we knew that wisdom says don't come to Africa under the circumstances with pain and cramps and happening. And shortly after that, we learned she had to have surgery. And we prayed, believe God, and she said her recovery was speedy. God used doctors, medication, everything possible, and he used his own hands on you as well. And God brought you here this weekend to say thank you for, your, for answered prayers. Amen. So God bless you and bless Ron as well. Uh, it's great to have you here, Ron, with us too. So God bless you both. Thank you. Nola? I'm grateful to be here, praise God, from 2016 until now. I thank God to be here when I was done, praise God, the joy of the Lord in this place. 
and thank God for his joy and his peace, and thank God for today especially. I could be somewhere else, but thank God I'm here. Amen. Thank God for your pastor. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Let that be your testimony, Sister Nola. I just want to thank the Lord. Use the mic. I want to thank the Lord for favor. I have a decision. Don't touch the bottom of the mic. Don't touch the bottom of the mic. That's what's making this. Yeah, there you go. Now put it right to your mouth. Go ahead. Start over. I want I want to thank the Lord for favors in my life. These favors are not good favors, but to me they are good favors because God was in it. I had to go to New York. There was a funeral that I had to attend to, to Marcia's funeral, which I'm very involved in her life, which I could not be here because my brother passed away too. Unfortunately, they didn't have a minister, so I had to be the minister, uh. which I did not know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did not know because the funeral was on the Thursday, and I only could fly on the Thursday. So the Friday... I had to do the resting part, but we couldn't because it was raining in New York, it's flooding. So the Saturday I had to do that. But instead of that, my two family, my sister went into the hospital and my nephew-in-law wife went into the hospital. One had a stroke and one had uh, bone cancer. But God has given favors that I could able to speak to my family, all of them, because they all are there, all to me. So Amen. God has granted me favor because I say, Father, what do I do? I have to make decision. But I hear in my heart that you have to go to New York. All right. So I went without knowing that I had to be delayed, the, um, the last right, and I had to do that. Praise God. So Amen. God has granted me favor. And by flying, it was favor to everyone. Well, so we want to I say give God thanks and praise. thank you for your obedience yes. to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Remember, I, I, always, I always share with you, every one of your ministers, you better be ready. This world needs every one of you, and I can't be where you are. Amen. So you are the only expression of Jesus wherever you go. And God wants to use you wherever you are to express his love and his grace to those who are in discomfort and those who are hurting. All right. So God bless you, Sister Nola. She's a two-timer, by the way. She attends another church, but she pops in here all the time and is <laughs> always coming and teasing us with her blessings. God bless you. Who else? Oh, that's right, your son. Okay, oh, that's your son next to you. Excellent. Wonderful to have him. Joseph? Uh, so we got a few uh, people messaging online. Oh, I love this one. Oh, hey, we're watching you online too. Excellent, excellent, uh, excellent. Go right so ahead. I'm just going to fly through them quickly. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Pecan Julian says, I, I am here today infected with COVID-19 for the fourth time. But I am grateful for the amazing son. Teresa Sparks, I am grateful that I woke up this morning and he is allowing me to breathe easily. I'm also thankful for my sister who had a heart attack on Sunday, is breathing on her own. Please, FBC, keep us in your prayers. Angela Stevens, I'm also thankful that God healed me for many, many, through many, many serious health conditions. And Paulette Scott Dill, so thankful. <laughs> Was she was she texting while she was in the choir singing? Yeah, yeah she is. She is. I what think you kind get of her for church that one. is this, huh? But um, <laughs> I, I'm just grateful uh, to have the opportunity to live and get to know each and every one of you, and being able to share experiences which help deepen our connections and learning to love and grow. And I saw that um, with the walk at Christy Pitts, uh, one of the signs said. Uh, through love, with love, we have to uh, go through grief. So even though we love people, we still have to go through that, and that's what makes it special. Amen. Wonderful, Joseph. Thank you. We're proud of you, brother. That's awesome, eh, Elder Cora? You know, there is so much I could give God thanks for, but the most important thing that I'm thankful for, that he reached down his mighty hand, and he lifted me up from that miry clay. I thank him for his son, Jesus Christ, today. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, where would I be? Mm. I thank God that he's not just my mother or my father, but he's my God. 
I have an intimate relationship with him. And I know that no matter what the trials or the tribulations are, that I have him on which to lean. And I thank God that he put me in a place that I can also use to lift up and encourage others. And I thank God, like I said before, for a church family and to be a part of the family of God. You know, like Pastor says time and time again, it doesn't matter where you live. If you know who Jesus is, you're part of that big family of God. And I thank each and every one for your support and for your prayers. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Elder Cora. Thank you so much. One over here, Sister Marlene. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God for waking me up this morning in my right mind. And I thank him for my family. And I thank God for my church family. And he's a great, great God. He's been so good to me and my family. Take Amen. care. Amen. Thank you so much. Over here. I, I got him. I just want to thank God for his presence, actually, because you know, I think about... Um, even as a child, some of the things that we used to do that was so dangerous. Um, I remember, I'll tell you one thing specifically. We used to climb up on the side of buildings. And you know, even the buildings where there's no, even no grip. But you know, I thought about God as a father for a long time. My father was, he was a good man, but he wasn't present because he worked abroad. He was a farm worker. While we were in Jamaica, that's the way he provided for us. But I knew God's presence as a father from a young age, and that is special. Amen. 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 Thank God. Amen. Thank God for that. A couple more. I thank God for a pamphlet that was given to me 15 years ago, which changed my life. The honesty and the truth and the recovery process that I went through. And because of that, I'm a better mother, I'm a better grandmother, I'm a better neighbor, better friend. So I thank God for just a piece of paper that was handed to me, which changed my life. Thank you. Amen. God can use any means necessary. Amen. Once you are attentive and listening to that still small voice. I want to thank God for waking me up this morning and that I have the breath of life in me. I'm alive. That's wonderful. And I'm also thankful to be in church this morning. God is good. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is great. Amen. One more. Good, uh, good morning, church. Um, give God good thanks and happy Thanksgiving. I want to give God thanks for saving me when I was about nine. I was walking on I with four friends. One more step to the right, I would have been dead. Jesus must have been walking on the water that day. And later on in life, I was baptized in that same lake. Later on in life in Nova Scotia. So I'm giving him thanks for everything he has done for me in my life and my family. Amen. Amen. Woo! Is this good? Uh, ah. um, I'm thankful for, for my life. Um, what God has done in my life, both bad and good. And um, I'm able to walk on two feet and two legs. Thank you. Well, we know the testimony behind that, right? A few months ago, unable to walk. But Jesus says you're going to walk again. Amen. Go ahead, my brother. Um, I'm thankful for the bread of life. I'm also thankful for peace. Not a lot of people have that, so I'm very thankful for God to, like, for God keeping me through this year. I'm, a part, I'm about approaching like my intense moments in life, which is finishing school. And there is, a lot of, there is a lot of people in my faculty that I, I still hear them to this day, like they just dropped out. And it's not like I'm the, like the most insane or smartest person in the class. I do do the work, but honestly, it's just that sense of peace. It's been very intense and I keep praying and putting everything to God. For the past two years, especially when COVID happened, I just leaned on God and everything. Like, I do so much, but I know, like, he's doing the impossible. I thank God for my family, that he's keeping everyone intact. I've heard stories of kids, families, neighbors who have died. So I'm grateful to be able to, like, stand today to say that God is good indeed. Thank you. Amen. One, one year left, Oemi. 
One more year. How old are you, sir? How old are you? You're 21? Oh, my goodness. If, you, if, you, if you're in your 20s, stand with me. If you're in your 20s, stand. Or, t or teenagers, te sit down, choir. If you're a teenager, 15 and, no, 16 and over, 16 to 30, stand. 16 to 30. Deaconola, just, uh, yeah, <laughs> bow down. Wow. I hope you guys got something to thank God for. Amen. Amen. That you are in church when you could have been somewhere else, following all the rhetoric of what's going on in your world, in your social media. But I want to encourage you as my brother just did, okay? No matter how intense it might get, you stay intense with Jesus. You stay intense with God. Amen. And I am so happy. Look at the back. All those guys and the cameras back there and sound. And great to have our wonderful uh, young Jaden with us. I keep, I keep saying young, but he's a grown man too. He's got more beard than me. But, uh, but thankful for you guys because you helped make this church vibrant. There's a battle between the old and the new. There's, I mean, the old and the young. And you guys come because you make a difference in our ministry. And we recognize that you are this generation. Not the next, but you are this generation. You are the now generation. Amen? So God bless you. And I say thank you for who you are. Keep serving God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, if you're 30 and over, stand. If you're 30 and over, stand. If you're 30 and over, stand real quick. If you're 30 and over. That's the rest of the church. Come on. <laughs> oh, I better sit down. All right. Deacon Kevin, stand up, please. Now, the balance between the two is very important. You understand that? Because some churches express on one side versus the other side. God wants us to mix together between our culture, our differences, our, rel our religions. He wants us to come together. He wants us to come together with our age differences. Why? Because it's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. Amen. And we bring the balance together where we appreciate your wisdom and your experience of this ministry and what you bring to this church. We will never forget. In fact, you are the ones who have carried us for the last number of years and you've helped raise these young children from Sunday school to where they are now. Thank you for what you have done also for investing in our lives. Amen. God bless you and keep you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in his work. Amen. You may have your seats. Thanks, thanks, we give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, my soul is at rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks. Come on, tell him now. For all you've done, I am so blessed, my soul is at rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks. Sing it again one more time, thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you I am so blessed, my soul is at rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks, oh Lord, I give you thanks, amen, oh but God, the things we have done. In the places we have gone, the things we have said, and yet God loves us this much, but for the goodness of God. Amen? So thank you for sharing and for encouraging us that no matter what we go through in this life, in everything, we will give him thanks. Amen? A wonderful brother, Dion Flash, he's got a couple of CDs out, and I want to just acknowledge him again. He's going to play for us one more time before I just give you a, just an encouraging word, just a quick encouraging word. Is that all right? He's a gifted pianist, composer, and, and, and arranger who has been writing, performing, and arranging music for the past 30 years. I thought he was standing up for like the 20 to... 
No, no, I, I guess not. I guess not. He has two albums recording available, Journey with, with Hymns and his latest release, Season of Prayer. Make sure we get a couple for the church, okay? We'll make sure we pay for that. And he's performing concerts in a GT in Ontario as well as the U.S. Bermuda. Anybody from Bermuda? Yeah, yeah, Deacon Kevin back there. You go, go bless him. And the Caribbean. Anybody from the Caribbean? All six of you, what's going on here? Anybody from the Caribbean? Come on, make some noise. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. His style combines classic jazz and gospel elements in a very interesting way, as we observed earlier on today. Amen. Love your classic uh, mix, brother. God bless you. Play for us one more time. It's great to have you at First Baptist Church. Amen. And he's going to be downstairs with the CDs later on. If you want to pick up one, I encourage you to do so just to support our brother. But let's go ahead and have you play for us. Agnes Day by Michael W. Smith.
Wow, wow, wow. God bless those fingers, brother. I'm telling you, amen. Thank you for so skill, playing so skillfully for us, and God bless you in your endeavors to carry his name through music and through those wonderful keys, amen. God bless you. It's good to have you this, with us this year. Give him another hand, up, please. Oh, man, I know you all got your turkey on the, on, on the, in the oven and got some great dinner plan. Nobody invited me up, but that's all right. That's all right. I probably go to McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know. It's Thanksgiving and nobody invited me. I, I, pastor isn't upset. Don't worry about a thing, okay? You all shameful people, you just... Anyways, listen, we are going to anoint you before you go for those who would like to be anointed because I promised to anoint you, my sister. I haven't forgotten about you, all right? But let me give you a word of encouragement. It is Thanksgiving, and many of us have good reasons for Thanksgiving, right? And we want to say Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving carries a whole meaning. Is it Thanksgiving, or do we give thanks? Which one is it? Hmm? Is it thanksgiving? Because thanksgiving just seems to give an implication that, you know what, it's just one of those things because we materially blessed or because somebody gave us something or because we got something in return. But how many of you know that not everybody's getting good things? And that everybody's receiving good gifts? Many of us people in the world are going through tragedy and sadness and not even having an opportunity to receive any, any kind of a blessing. So is it thanksgiving or is it just giving thanks? Well, the Philippines makes it very clear that in everything we should give thanks, right? In everything we should give thanks. I want to suggest is giving thanks to God no matter what the circumstance might be. Is that true? And I think he has something more to say to us as well because uh, some people look for happiness in the past and say, when I was younger. Some look in the future and say, when I get rich, I'm going to such and such. And some look in the present and say, let's give thanks for today is a gift. Why it's called a present. Isn't that true? Thanksgiving is not about thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is about thanks living. It's about living every day with an attitude of gratitude, with a heart of thanks. And thanks living is about the goodness of God. And we sang it earlier on. Amen. So your thanks then, if you focus on the world and the material, you will always have conditional reasons to say thankful. Right? But when you understand it's about the goodness of God, then every day of your life is one of thankfulness. Thankful God this morning because I got breath in my bodies. When I woke up, I woke up in my right mind. Isn't that true, somebody? And as we expressed earlier on, you've got food, shelter, and clothing. Who's got families? Who is married? Who is single? Who is looking for a spouse? You bunch of liars, you. Oh, come on now. Who's looking for a spouse? Come on, somebody. Help me. Help me, somebody. Help me. You're all not walking in faith. But in the midst of it all, whether you're married or whether you're single, you still say, thank you, Lord. Isn't that true? How many of you got money in the bank? Honey, they're lying again. If you've got a penny in your pocket, that means you've got money in the bank, right? If you've got a million dollars in the bank, that means you've got money in the bank. In the midst of it, whether it's a penny or whether it's a million dollars, what do we say? Oh, you got the message, didn't you? In the midst of good times and bad times, no matter what the situation is, you always say, thank you, Lord, because it's amazing what God can do with one penny and what he can do with a million if you walk in faith. Somebody say amen. If you take your eyes off your material, if you take your eyes off your, your, your possession of this world and what the world has to offer and competing against something better than where the grass looks greener, if you recognize that God owns a cat loader, and I want to introduce you guys to something very special. I got a big fish fry barbecue happening in heaven, okay? Because I've got a mansion just over, just over the hilltop. I might be in a 30-foot you know, square foot, 30, or whatever, it's 2,000 square foot little house, all right? Little house on the prairie, you know, with one wife and two kids. Well, just one, one, one wife and one kid now. I just, just me and the girls are hanging out now. But Thanksgiving is about thanks living. Thanks living is about the goodness of God. But let me give you something more important, because goodness is not determined by experience, by its, but by its source. Goodness is not determined by experience, but by its source. 
it's God. Because not everyone here can say you've gone through good things in life. Isn't that true? Not everybody here can say they've always received good things. We've received bad things, bad rap, insults and hurt. Sometimes family and friends are the ones who do the most damage to you. Isn't that true? We've received bad gifts. You've gone to buy a car and it ended up being a lemon. And I'm talking from experience, all right? I had a car where the neighbors, when I showed up, the neighbors closed their blinds. That's, that, well, that's just a side joke. But in the midst of it all, God was still able to bring me to and fro. In the midst of all the bad rap I may have had in life, where people hurt me and disappoint me, I can still see I've got people around me who God brought into my life who was able to encourage me and nourish me and, 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 and serve me through him as well. So in the midst of it all, experience is not the standard for goodness. James chapter 1, verse 7, he says, Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good thing has God as its source. Amen? And God only produces that which is good. We might use it for a bad purpose, like, you know, drugs and marijuana and cocaine or, or, or violence and hate and invent guns so we can hurt people. But in the midst of it all, we have weapons so we can do what? So we can kill animals who in turn can, we can eat and have good food. Right? We have computers who can be used for bad, for pornography and all the wrong things on social media. But in the end, technology is what's giving us a place of worship. It all depends on how it's used for the glory of God. Because goodness is not about your experience. It's about the source of life. And his name is God, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen? And let's continue on because how we answer the fact that God is good, yet bad things happen to most of us. It isn't good. Then it didn't have its source in God, we say. Absolutely, because it's evil that brought on sin and badness in the world. It wasn't God. It was God who brought Adam and Eve in a perfect world. And what did he do? He says, go, replenish the earth, steward the earth. It was we who failed God miserably. And now we're complaining when bad things happen, but it's not about God. But there's coming a day when God is going to resolve that. The proof of goodness isn't in the experience. It's in the source. Nobody likes to get a shot. A needle. Who likes needles? But if you go to your dentist, you have to have a needle to freeze your mouth so that you don't have to live in pain. It might seem bad, but it ends up being... My wife experiences this week. She had to go and get her teeth fixed, okay? So she can kiss me well. <laughs> Somebody say amen. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Keep show me those pearlies, honey. God's goodness doesn't mean that bad things won't happen to you. We live in a bad, evil world, but because God is good. His goodness will always follow us, whatever is planned against us. Amen? Deacon Ola sent a, sent a WhatsApp this week, and it was a very, very nice one. He says, you know, God did not remove the Red Sea. He just allows you to walk through it. Come on, somebody. Isn't that awesome? Your storms of life that comes your way, amen? Sometimes God may not remove the storms. He just lets you go through it, amen? If he can take you to it, he will take you. He will take you through it. So somebody say it's about the goodness of God. It's about the goodness of God. So happy thanks living, I would say now to every one of you. It's not about your thanksgiving. It's about your thanks living. Let me give you some scriptures to encourage you. Psalms 34 verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Somebody, Psalms 118 verse 29. Give thanks to the Lord for he is and his mercy endures for... Psalms 9 verse 1, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonderful deeds. Somebody say Hebrews 12, 28. Let us be thankful and so worship God acceptedly with reverence and awe. Colossians 3, 15. Listen to this one. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. 2 Corinthians 9, 15. And thanks be to God for his wonderful gifts, the word says. Wow, you guys are pretty bright, all right? 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen? And the last one, Revelation 7, verse 12. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. 
Amen. Because he is an awesome. He is an awesome God. Amen. Let's wrap it up right there because whatever you do, whether in word or whether in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Christ. That's Colossians 3, verses 17. Amen? Amen. Bow your hearts in prayer. Father, we give you thanks across these airwaves, online, in person, thanking you in everything. We give you thanks through all circumstances because our goodness is not about our experience, but it's about your goodness. You are a good God, and you run after us every day. And we thank you for reminding us of this truth, Father. We just pray your blessing on us now. As we prepare to leave this place and go to our families and friends and celebrate, we think of those who are less fortunate, those on the streets, those refugees who are, Lord, in, 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 in places that is unknown to them. But, Lord, let this moment of thanksgiving, let them recognize it's the source of God's, the joy of their Lord can be, the joy of their strength can be you, Lord. And I pray for those across the world who is destitute and fighting from wars and and, and murders and killings and violence and poverty, Lord. And we're going to enjoy a wonderful turkey and meals today. May we not be remiss to say, Lord, bless those who are less fortunate. Today. Today. And always. Let there be a sense of thanks living in the hearts of your creation, Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Come and sing our song. Give, oh, give thanks and team, come and sing for us. And we, while you're doing that, we're going to pray and anoint those. My come. Uh...
And we anoint you, choir. We anoint you, band and musicians, as you serve for the glory of God. We give him thanks for the gift of music, but I give him thanks for your personal lives, that you will continue to walk in favor with him, and God will bless you in all of your endeavors. And this we declare as we anoint you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for the anointing. We're going to dismiss now. You're free to go. I'll see you outside and give you a greeting. All right. Great to have you in service. All right. Hey, go have a strong week. Not a weak week. Not a weak week. We'll see you all later. God bless you. One second, one second. We forgot to make mention very important for us. Reverend Wallace Smith in Nova Scotia, a very pronounced pastor in Nova Scotia. Most of you either were pastored by him or know him that came from Nova Scotia. He passed away this week. And we want to express our blessings to the family of North Preston Church there, as well as to all those who are affiliated in the family of the Smiths, that God bless him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll see you outside. Grab some chocolate. I think we got some chocolates outside there. Just grab a piece of chocolate on me, okay? Downstairs. And downstairs for the, for the CD. All right, okay. And we have some goodies here. Come and grab an apple or a corn or something. You're more than welcome to, all right?